People of God, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a delight to welcome you to worship, whether you are here in our sanctuary or joining us from afar, whether you are a longtime member or visiting with us for the very first time. We give thanks for your presence with us and are grateful that you are worshiping with us today. If you are here in our sanctuary, there is a red friendship folder in your pew. We invite you to take that, note your presence with us, and if you are visiting, we would love to be able to connect with you in the week to come, so would ask that you provide in enough information in that friendship folder so we can do that well in the coming days. While that's being passed up and down your pews, I have a number of announcements, the first being that next Sunday is our Blue Jean Sunday. What in the world is that, Rachel? Well, I'm glad you asked. Blue Jean Sunday is a fantastic opportunity for us to volunteer time and energy to care for our building and our grounds with the help and support of our property manager, Dave Sterling. If you are able to participate, you wear your jeans to church. We don't care. Wear whatever, and we will wear something. And we will be delighted to feed you lunch and, and to all work together to do some cleanup on our grounds. It's always lots to do in this fall season with leaves falling. If you are able to join us, please, in that friendship folder, and this might mean you have to pass it again, just put blue jean next to your name. We just want to get a ballpark idea so we have enough lunch for you, and we'll do that in the fellowship hall and then have um, 
opportunities that Dave will provide for us to work around the church. Again, that's next Sunday, immediately following worship. Tonight is family movie night in our fellowship hall. I don't know if this is in your bulletin this week, but I know it was last week. And if you want to come and haven't signed up yet, you can do that in the Welcome Center. On the back, there's an opportunity for fellowship, Bunko Night. If you don't know what Bunko is, I'm going to direct you to Seth McHenry over here. Wave, Seth, who's one of our hosts for it. To learn more about Bunko, just a great, fun opportunity to be together. That sign-up is also in the Welcome Center. And in two weeks' time, we are looking ahead, friends, is our anniversary Sunday when we give thanks for longtime members in the life of our church, but we also give thanks just for our life together. And so please note that announcement in the bulletin, particularly if you have uh, individuals who you would like for us to, um, I'm confusing things. Take note of the announcement in your bulletin so that I'm not confusing you from here, because that is where the information will be correct. And my last announcement is a reminder that today is a wonderful day. Today is Dedication Sunday in the life of our church, the day when we offer to God our annual financial commitments and our commitment of time and talent for the year ahead. Now, if right in this moment you're saying to yourself, I left that card on my kitchen counter, I know right where it is, fear not. You can pass that friendship folder again. There should be at least one card in each of those folders. So if you need one today, feel free to take that. If you've already mailed yours in, I, we have those, and they are going to be part of our dedication later in worship today. So those will be included. And if you are not a member yet, but would like to fill out a card in gratitude for the missions and ministries of Morrisville Presbyterian Church, you are welcome to do so. The front of the card is financial commitments, and the back of the card is time and talent commitments. We would welcome your participation, even if you do not call yourself a member of this church yet. All are welcome to participate. As a thank you to all of you for your ongoing generosity, the Stewardship Committee would love to welcome you in the lounge immediately following worship today. The lounge is down the main hallway, right, out, right next to the Welcome Center. I've heard there is a beautiful, delicious, and especially large cake. So please join us. The Stewardship Committee would welcome you to join us. And we love the opportunity, folks, to just give thanks for our life together, to give thanks for God's abundance and the generous response we are able to provide. So please join us in the lounge right down the hall immediately after worship. Friends, there is no doubt that our lives are full of God's abundant blessings in this place. And so with joy and thanksgiving, let us worship God together. as you are able and join me in your in the responsive call to worship let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live where the hungry are served first and the thirsty drink life's water let us build a house where love can dwell built of hopes and dreams and visions where the stranger is welcomed with open arms and the love of Christ ends divisions all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us worship God together. Please remain standing and join us in hymn number 697, Take My Life, verses 1, 4, 5, and 6.
we seek to give ourselves fully to our God. All our wants and our hopes, all of our love and our compassion, even our faults and our limits. So trusting in the wide mercy and love of our God, let us confess our sins using the prayer of confession as it is printed in your bulletin, followed by a time for silent confession. Merciful God, you made your law clear to us. Love. Love one another. Love without exception. Love without excuses. But we are a fickle people, O oh God, consumed with our own comfort and our own priorities. We pretend we do not notice the person yearning to belong when we have more important things to do. We pretend to be do not see or hear their hunger for friendship when there are others we'd prefer to talk to. Forgive our meager attempts to share your love, O oh God, forgetting that people hunger for more than just food and thirst for more than just water. Melt and mold our hearts as only you can. Empower us by your love to push past our own discomfort and excuses and extend the radical hospitality your Son offered to us so that we might build a house where your love can dwell. God searches for the lost and finds us. God invites the hungry to the table and feeds us. God sends Jesus and frees us from death's prison. God forgives all who sin and heals us with mercy and grace. Together, let us proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved Church, the peace of Christ be with you. As forgiven people, let us share with one another the peace of Christ. As we ready ourselves to hear God's word, let us have a brief prayer. Almighty God, open our minds and our hearts to hear your words as if they were being spoken for the very first time. Amen. Please join me in the responsive scripture reading as printed in your bulletin. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with psalms of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are also. 
The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship, bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd love to invite my young friends forward for our Time for Young Disciples. And we're going to go up the stairs today. Come with me. Come with me. And I'm gonna ha we're going to come up here. Sit all around here. This is perfect. This is perfect. Good morning. Good morning. Have a seat. Have a seat. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey, Ben, come on up, bud. It's good to see all of you. So I've placed us strategically today because I'm curious, what's new in the sanctuary today? What? There's a tree. There's a tree. <laughs> there is a tree. This is a very special tree. This is our stewardship tree. Stewardship is this season where we think about all that God has given us 
and the ways that we can bless God in response and be generous as God has been generous to us. But one of the things I love about this tree is unlike trees that only have leaves, these have, this one has really special leaves on it. And on this tree, we are reminded of some of the amazing, wonderful things that happen in our church. Like, let me see. Oh, look, our youth in mission trip. Let's see. I know there's Bible study on here, the food center, worship and choirs. There are things growing on this tree that show the wonderful ministries and missions that happen in our church. But also, we added leaves this year. These leaves, we asked people the last couple weeks to think about how, have you, how do you feel at home here or who helped you to belong here? What do you love about this church? And these, all these little bright green leaves, these are an example of all the people and all the things that they love that have helped them to feel that this is home, that they belong here. And there are more leaves that say, what does that say? Can anybody read it? What is it? Love. There are so many leaves that say love. Love growing out of our life together. But I have an important question. So we have this tree here that shows all the ways we're growing, all the things that are happening in our life together. There's a tree outside. You've seen lots of trees around, I bet. Have you all seen trees? Yeah. Okay. So you can see the trunk. We're, you know, I know this is a pretend trunk, but we see the trunk, we see branches, we see leaves. What is a really impar important part of a tree that we don't see right now? Hmm. Uh, that you'd never see, really, with a tree. Uh, well, right. So, I mean, like, trees outside. Tre think about trees outside. I'm throwing you off with our pretend tree here. What, what do you not see that's under the ground? Roots. Roots. Is that what you were going to say? Is that what you were going to say? You all are so smart. Roots are under the ground, holding the tree in place. And we have a scripture passage today that actually talks about what we as a church are supposed to be rooted in. What's supposed to be at the base of all we do, the, the foundation of all we do, in the roots of everything we do. What do you think that is? Any guesses? The text says we need to be rooted and grounded in love. 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 We need to be rooted and grounded in God's love. It's the only way that we can do all of these things, that all these other things can grow out of our being rooted in God's love. So, how, so that's a hard concept, though. How do you think we might be rooted in God's love? What might help us to learn more about God's love or to know God's love that it becomes a foundation of what we do? Any ideas? How might we learn about God's love? Well, I have a couple thoughts. You're all here right now, right? And part of what we do in worship is, oh yeah, as we talk about God's love, yeah. Getting to, know other getting to know other people. That's a great way we get to know God's love. Being in, in Sunday school. A lot of you went to Sunday school today. That's a way we get to know God's love. Doing music with Mr. Carpenter. That's a way we get to know God's love. All of these things we do together. Serving in these missions and these ministries in our church. That's how we get to know God's love. Because it's super important. It is essential and it is the only way all of this grows, is if we are first rooted in God's love. So we're going to work on that. That's why we come to church. It's why we read the Bible. It's why we sing songs about God. All so we can learn, and how we love each other, learning more about God's love. So I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And we will pray and give thanks for God's love today. Let's pray together. You can all repeat after me. Dear God. We thank you for your amazing love. Help us 
to be rooted in your love. So we can love your people and love your world. Amen. Thank you all. You can go to music with Mr. Carpenter, or you can head to your seats or to the nursery. Our second scripture reading comes from the letter to Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Together, let us listen for the word and wisdom of God. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height, and depth, and to know that love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together again. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us and mold us. Fill us and use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. And to that end, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. According to the wise words of Benjamin Franklin, guests, like fish, begin to smell after three days. And we laugh because we know it's true. But sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget and we make the well-intentioned mistake of inviting people to stay with us for four days or five, or heaven forbid, even a week. After a few days as host, we might find ourselves going to bed early, when in fact we just want to avoid the late night small talk, or we would rather watch our favorite show on our tiny phone in peace, rather than on the TV in the family room with the running commentary of our guest. After a few days as host, we might find ourselves leaving for work earlier than usual. Yeah, it's busy these days. Or whisper fighting with a spouse behind closed doors. I told you they should have gotten a hotel. They're driving me nuts. They're driving you nuts. I'm the one who took them to lunch. 
I've been entertaining them all day. You went to Home Depot four hours ago. It's 15 minutes from here. Dare I say, we've all been there. Well, the church in Ephesus was being asked to take in their own visitors. Only these visitors weren't just going to stay for a few days. They were moving in. And you'd think the church would have been excited. After all, in terms of numbers, it was a new members class to beat all new members classes. The largest they'd seen in years. But despite the perpetual cry of any church for new members, this church wasn't particularly excited. And instead, like Benjamin Franklin, agreed that guests, like fish, begin to smell after three days. You see, all of these new members were Gentiles. You remember Gentiles, anyone who wasn't Jewish and thus was not included in the covenant between God and Israel. Gentiles were people with whom Jews did not interact and certainly did not make space for in their lives or religious communities. But here in this letter to the church in Ephesus, the author is instructing the church that it is God's will for the Gentiles to be welcomed into salvation and into the family of God. So no, my friend, they will not smell after three days because they are no longer even guests or visitors. They are part of the family. And it is your job to welcome them. To welcome them in. Not just with a hello or a how you doing, but with the welcome of God. Receiving them into your home or into your circle of friends that they might call this home to. And so they might know the sense of belonging that you already know. Everything is changing says the author, no longer will there be an us and a them or an insider and an outsider when it comes to God's family. In God's family, all will be welcome. But the author knows he's writing to a stubborn people, a people who like their church the way it is. It's fine. A people who are not inclined to call outsiders family in the same way they do those who, who've been around for a decade or more. There is resistance. There are excuses. There is uncertainty and fear. And so our text begins for this reason. The reason being that it is God's will that Gentiles be welcomed into the family of God for this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. The author is filled with joy and gratitude that all followers of Jesus Christ are part of God's family. This is a celebratory occasion. The walls of division have come down. There is no insider or outsider. There is no visitor any longer. All are part of the family of God. And then the author shifts to praying for the church. So, God, so the author has just given thanks to God for this gift of the family of God and then shifts to praying for the particular church in Ephesus. Naming that his hope for the church in Ephesus is that it would be utterly taken over by Christ. That they would not only welcome the Gentiles as God intended, but they would allow Jesus to move right in, to fully take up residence in their hearts and their minds. The author prays that all in the church will be strengthened in their inner being from the inside out. 
by the power of God's Spirit. And this is not something they can do on their own, not, not a way of them becoming stronger in themselves, but by allowing Christ in. To dwell in their hearts so much that their roots are growing and becoming more and more grounded in the soil of God's love. But, but implicit in this prayer for the church, implicit in this prayer for the church in Ephesus is that as they become more rooted and grounded in God's love, they will also be transformed by that same love. They will be changed, and it won't be easy. Karen Chakowin described it beautifully when she said, you know, having Christ dwell in our hearts is akin to having a new person move into your household. If they're just visiting, well, it's all rather easy. You offer hospitality, you try to practice good manners. But if someone moves in to stay, everything changes. At first, you might try to hold on to your familiar patterns and routines, and the new member may work hard to accommodate you and you know, stay out of your way. But eventually, they make their mark. Conversations change. Relationships realign. Household tasks shift. Responsibilities shift. So it is when Christ moves in to the hearts of Christians. This isn't merely tweaking old patterns. Everything changes. Everything changes. Like the Ephesians, like, like any church for that matter, I realize we're not always a people who like this broad idea of change. We grow comfortable with our routines and our rituals and our priorities, so much so that we don't even realize how important these rituals and routines are to us until a pastor has the audacity to ask us to have coffee with people we don't know. But here in this letter to the Ephesians, the author is offering us so much more than comfortable rituals and routines. He is praying for the church that Christ might dwell in its heart so completely, so completely that it is rooted and grounded in God's love alone, in God's unending, boundary-breaking, life-altering love. And I imagine in the same way he prayed for the church in Ephesus, he also prays for Morrisville Presbyterian Church, praying that as we seek to build a house where God's love always dwells, we never lose sight of the fact that first and foremost, our hearts, our life together must be utterly overtaken by Jesus Christ, living as he lived, welcoming as he welcomed, loving as he loved. But his love, Christ's love, well, you and I both know it goes well beyond a hello or how you doing, well beyond letting people stay for a few days. 
His love is a love that doesn't allow a stranger or a visitor to remain a stranger or a visitor, but rather welcomes them into the family of God with joy and delight. Confident that we have not been complete without them. And that this is a place they can call home now to. Christ's love always remembers that people hunger for more than just food. And they thirst for more than just water. Christ's love takes risks. It walks across roads and sanctuaries, making room at dinner tables and extending invitations to those who yearn to belong. His love sees the image of God in every person, every person, (coughs) who by God's grace, who, excuse me, His love sees the image of God in every person who by God's grace walks through our doors. And eventually, hopefully, we won't be able to recognize the home without them anymore. But my friends, I will warn you, If we let Christ fully move into our hearts, into the heart of this church, when we live as Christ lived, when we welcome as he welcomed, when we love as he loved, if we're doing it right, we will be transformed by it. Change will come. As Anne Lamott so poetically put it, God loves you just as you are, but God loves you too much to leave you as you are. This is why the author prayed for the church in Ephesus. And this is why he prays for us too. Because to be rooted and grounded in God's love above all else means you are at the same time being transformed by it into the people God wants you to be, living as Christ lived, welcoming as he welcomed, loving as he loved. Friends, if we're going to build this house where God's love always dwells, And we have to be willing to let Christ fully move into our hearts and the heart of our life together. And if we do, if we do, we might begin to understand in some small part what is the breadth and length and height and depth of God's love. A love that calls us to welcome one another and love one another with a fierceness and openness and beauty that we could not summon on our own. And let me be clear there is no question that this love is already here. Heck, we ran out of leaves for people to write on, to hang on the tree. To name the ways they feel at home here. Or the ways they know God's love here. I see God's love here all the time. I see it every time we welcome a baby in baptism into God's church. I see it every time you serve one another or care for one another in whatever way is needed And I see it every time you enjoy each other's company 
where you worship God together. I have seen it <coughs> in those of you who've already scheduled your coffee dates or already had them. And I see it in your incredible generosity of time, talent, and resources that we will dedicate to God in just a few minutes. God is here. God's love is here. But God loves us too much to leave us as we are. So together, let us build a house where love can dwell. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we pray that Christ's love taking root in our hearts may be a change that builds communities of belonging. Let us stand in body or spirit and sing hymn number 700, I'm going to live so God can use me. And join me as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed, as printed in your bulletin. Together, let us state what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
like the author of the letter to the Ephesians, we pray that God may come and take root in our hearts, that we might be changed in word and action. So let us join together. Let us pray. It is a puzzling thing how you build, O oh God, that in a world full of gemstones and brick, plaster and copper, steel, silver, and gold, you create through breath and word and subtlety. We give you thanks, Master Carpenter, for the ways you wield well your tools of compassion and hospitality, how you open understanding through conversation and mend hurt through vulnerability. For we have seen these past weeks how you create shelter for your love, how your breadth and depth can be found in an open invitation to coffee, to asking someone's name, or extending the community of prayer beyond our initial walls of comfort or familiarity. For these ways you have molded us and continue to change us, we give you thanks, our Creator God. We recognize well, O Lord of salvation, how needed your love is in this world as we continue to reel at the news of Palestine and Israel. So we pray that you who heard the cry of Israel's pain, that you will listen to Jews in Israel and around the world who are seized with fear, grief, and terror, May they know a God and a global community who affirms their existence in this world. You who came to Joseph in prison, we ask that you aid Palestinians in Gaza who are stuck with no access to water, food, or shelter, freedom, citizenship, or basic human rights. You who are the true source of justice, may we all seek your ways towards peace as the eruption of noise confuses our response to such violence and pain in this world. For the hurt in this region as well as throughout, around the, the globe and even in our lives, it is too much for us to bear. So we turn to you, the one who is strong enough to carry it. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you will guide us into this week with your presence. When we face monotony or trial, remind us that we are not alone. When we turn inward, help us to heed the needs of our neighbor. And when we come back together again, May we know a place of love and belonging. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we take time to dedicate our annual commitments to God. Today we make a bold promise to one another and to God, pledging to give of ourselves and our money to nurture one another and to serve the world in the year to come. And there is no gift that is too small, no part that is unimportant in the story of God's love. Through our offering plates will come around today, as they always do, but in just a moment, you will also be invited 
to bring to the front your annual commitments, your estimate of giving for 2024, and place it in this basket. Reminded that in this act of faithfulness, we are building a house where God's love always dwells. As a reminder, there are estimate of giving cards available in your pew if you had not yet had a chance to fill one out. And if you have already submitted your card or estimate, estimated your giving online, your gifts are being included in all that we have dedicated to God this day. As we offer to God these gifts, I invite you to turn to hymn number 712. We will remain seated as we sing this hymn, but I invite you, whenever you are ready, as the Spirit moves through this hymn today, whenever you are ready, to bring your annual commitments to the front. Let us offer to God the first fruits of all that we have been given, and in faithful and joyful response, let us give to God. Let us sing together. responsive prayer of dedication as it is found in your bulletin. Creator of all, the earth is yours, the world and all who live in it. You have entrusted us with gifts, 
time, talent, energy, money, and asked us to use them to build your kingdom. With thanks and praise, we respond to your call with our annual commitments. You call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. And so we bring these gifts you have given, returning your generosity. We offer ourselves, our lives, our hopes and fears, our dollars and our hours. We commit ourselves to work for your world, to love and serve wherever you call. We ask your blessing on this, your church, as we seek to follow you with heart, mind, and soul, building a house where your love dwells. Bless these gifts, our investment, and our future, and they may multiply in faith, hope, and love. May our faithful stewardship bear witness to the love we know in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray all these things with grateful hearts. Amen. Please continue to stand in spirit or body and join together in singing hymn number 301, Let Us Build a House.
ends with thanks for the abundance of God's gifts and the abundance of our generosity. We invite you to join us in the lounge with the Stewardship Committee to celebrate our life together and to celebrate the house we are building where God's love always dwells. And so as we go out from the church to be the church, we go to live as Christ lived, to welcome as Christ welcomed, and to love as Christ loved. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, with those you love, and with those you are called to love this day and forevermore. And together we say, Amen. Thank you.